time for another Josh cast. I want to shout the intro. Because I'm filled with joy. That's bullshit. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to say the words. Just to see what it might be like. Surprisingly, doing well considering the circumstances of my life. I'm recording this on Valentine's Day, not Eve. What do I say? That'd be the day before Valentine's Day. I'm recording this on Valentine's Day night. My plan is to release it on Monday, February 15th, 2021. And uh, I probably, I'm going to try holding the mic so that I don't, uh, so it's not rubbing up against uh, my clothing, creating an annoying sound that has been on every other podcast I've recorded for the better part of four to five years. And maybe we can build our listenership here so that it is more than a couple of people in Spain. Not that there's anything wrong with people from Spain. That's not my intent. I wish there were more people from Spain who were listening. Perhaps then one day I would go to Spain and experience Spain, which is the name of their commercial. Experience Spain! And that's that's the end of the commercial. Just watching TV, watching Battlestar Galactic or whatever it is you're watching. And then out of the blue, there's just a guy standing in a room, not even outside. We don't even know if he's in Spain. Just standing in a room, staring at the camera, and he just says, Experience Spain! And I sit there and I think to myself, maybe he's on to something. I am also experimenting with not saying um. I listened back to one of these podcasts. Uh, I I just did it again. I can feel myself almost say um. I did it in one of these podcasts. I'm about to release a special, a stand-up comedy special that I recorded. Uh, God damn it. There it is again. Ah, <laughs> uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, there. Ah. Uh. Just get it out, Josh. Get them all out now. Uh, 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 uh. I recorded the special on Zoom. And I'm going to release it, probably self-release it through Amazon. And I'm sure that uh, big-name comedians, if they should stumble upon it, will watch it and go, I didn't need this. I didn't need this right now. This is not comedy. But, hey, I think... What, what will I say about this special? Uh, uh, there I did. Uh, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> I'm so frustrated with myself. What will I say about this special? What I will say about this special is that its heart is in the right place. That's what I will say. Is it perfect? God, no. The title, I believe, is going to be Nerdy Virgin Live from the Laptop. I feel very strongly about that title. At any rate, I'm going to release it. I'll let you know when. It'll be on Amazon, probably. I'm working it out. But my life is in flux at the moment. My mom is still still in the hospital, probably about to go home. And the big question is, is she going to recover and go back to how she was before or is this the beginning of a decline is you know if she gets healthier and she um, stops drinking will she be mentally fit or will she be mentally fit but are we also possibly seeing the beginnings of dementia which terrifies me for multiple reasons. Number one, her mother had Alzheimer's, her father had dementia, and if she has something now, I'm terrified that I'm going to get 
dementia or Alzheimer's or something when I'm that age. Uh, a tremendous amount of guilt because that's what I'm worried about first instead of being worried about her welfare. Worried about um, her... And worried about her. And is she going to be happy? Or is she going to be... You know, are these last few years going to be horrible? Which I don't want for her, and I don't think she wants either. So, <clears throat> so I'm experiencing a lot of emotion. I'm worried about my dad because he's stressed out. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm oh, just feeling uh, down. But then, weirdly, also, for some reason, on a bit of a high... It's happened to me before when bad things have happened with the family. I, sometimes I'll I'll get I'll feel excitement. And I was told by a therapist that this is a normal reaction. It's part of the I guess processing. Well, now I've just bummed myself out, which is. Not the point of this podcast. This is supposed to be a comedy podcast. We've got notes from the network, Josh. They're saying it's too dark. It needs to be funnier. This is If you're going to categorize it as a comedy podcast, for God's sakes, it's got to be comedy. Though I have been writing jokes about all of this, and that has been the, a release for me. Uh, here's what I'll admit. There's something... This is going to sound awful. My my mother, who has been a terrific mother, uh, but is a very... And when I was growing up, a very dominating presence. And you know, there was a part of me, I hate to... There's a part of me that... Because she and she's very, very highly intelligent. She calls me out on my BS, uh, and maybe there was a part of me that wants to win an argument. <laughs> There's a part of me that's saying, "Well, if she is losing her mental faculties, does this does this give me the edge I finally need? Because I'm ultra competitive, I, and I just need to be right and win arguments." See, you got to find the silver lining. And as I've said before, and as I will say again, that silver lining for me is narcissism. I did not eat Panda Express today, and for me that's a win. Don't get me wrong, I love Panda Express. I don't need it right now, not with my gastrointestinal system in the state that it is in. And I was able to talk myself out of having the orange chicken. What is the orange chicken at Panda Express, you might ask? It's just a tub of sugar and a couple of pieces of chicken. That's essentially what it is. It's fantastic. But it is sugar with a hint of chicken, with some chicken for seasoning. Which is an old joke I've heard all over the place. But the truth nonetheless. I did have my acai bowl, my daily acai bowl, which has a ton of sugar in it already, but doesn't have any meat and is vegan. And uh, I think maybe it's two teaspoons healthier than what I would do if I were to go to Panda Express. Lately, when I've been eating meat, I've been getting sick. Perhaps I'm tasting the suffering of the animal, and it's affecting my bowels. Or perhaps they're pounding these animals with antibiotics, and that is affecting my bowels. You know, you'd think with all the hormones and antibiotics they're putting in all of these animals, we somehow would not have gotten the plague. Actually, it's probably the opposite. I think that it, it makes the viruses even more... It, it's everything, it makes everything worse. Everything meat-related is making everything worse. 
That's why you have to eat meat that they haven't been injecting antibiotics. And how do you know? Because they it's on the label, and you that's supposed to be enough for us to trust it. It's on the label, so it's GMO-free. All it means is somebody has a printer. <laughs> we don't know. I feel like I've heard a comic talk about that, too. I've heard, I've heard comics talk about everything. It's so frustrating. Dramatic pause. Pinter pause. Dramatic pinter pause. That's what that was. Feeling better about not saying ums. I wasn't saying them as much. I'm feeling good about that. I know I've recorded another podcast where I've talked about that, but this is an opportunity for me to really focus on it. And I find when I focus on it, I'm much more emotionally connected to myself. You see that rage? Because I don't have um anymore, I can express my rage freely. So now I know when other people are talking to me and they're using a lot of ums, every single um is basically them saying, screw you! Good to know. Good to know. I'm doing this in my car because I can shout. I can't do this in my apartment. I just came home from work. Don't want to do it at the office. Doing this in my car. My car is behind a Subaru. Subaru. Oh, there's a special place in my heart for the Subaru. I just remember the Outback. And I just remember thinking, I don't know why. I always found that car interesting. The Outback. I would not want to drive that car because I imagine it handles a bit more sluggish as compared to sportier, smaller cars. But there's something about Subaru that just says practical. Subaru is practical. Subaru is the... What's the metaphor here? Subaru is the John Lithgow character in terms of endearment. <laughs> Just the nice guy who's uh, there for the wife who's not finding it what with the husband who's kind of the deadbeat. Yes, the John Lithgow of terms of endearment. That is That should be the Subaru commercial right there. You remember John Lithgow from Terms of Endearment? If you liked him and if you think that's the guy, drive the Subaru. Is the Subaru the kind of car that will seduce you? No, but the Subaru will take you to a nice lunch and listen to you when you talk about how you can't stand your parents and how your marriage is falling apart. Subaru, I'm here to listen. They'll never see Subaru as a character in Knight Rider. They'll always go for the sports car. It will never be the Subaru. I think a Subaru would be a great character. That should be the sidekick to the car in Knight Rider. The, side, the, the sidekick car that would come up and say, maybe, maybe we should try to talk to the bad guys. Maybe they can be reasoned with. <laughs> Subaru, maybe they can be reasoned with. But that's, maybe I'm thinking about these things because that's what I grew up with. I grew up in the suburbs and everything is boring, but familiar. So I have this thing about condominiums and townhomes whenever I see them. I have, there's a special place in my heart for condominiums and townhomes, which I'm not sure if the townhome that I grew up in, assuming it's still standing 100 years from now, even if it's been standing for even if it's been standing for 500 years. I watched a show on Netflix that chronicled famous British castles, and it was a it's a fantastic show. 
you, they show you the physical castle, they talk about the history of the castle. The townhouse that I grew up in, even if it's around for a thousand years, they're not going to make a Netflix special about the Champagne condominiums. I don't care if it's been around, if it's the only building left standing in the United States, they're not going to put it on the tour. They're just going to be a thousand years from now, the, the, those alien things that we're talking to uh, Haley Joel Osment at the end of AI, if that condo is the last thing standing, they're going to say, well, we, get, we recognize this is a million years old, but we also know, yeah, lower middle class, we don't need to, we're not that impressed. Yes, it's got a living room and a dining room, which is nice for, a, for the square footage. And we understand it was in a fairly decent part of town, right near the high school, which became problematic later because all the high school kids were walking around. But we don't need to uh, make any Netflix specials about this thing. It's fine. It was called Champagne Condominiums. That's where I grew up in. Champagne. Champagne Condominiums. Champagne. I wrote a bit about that that always kind of does mediocre. Maybe... Maybe because maybe maybe people feel I'm punching down when I say this, but has there ever been a condominium? And I'm pretty sure I've seen other comics talk about this present, this premise. Uh, uh, so I, I I always so that's what I do. I like to give footnotes, but I don't know the comic who was talking about. But at any rate, my point is the the place was called Champagne. And Champagne, I don't think, matches the, the, the beverage Champagne does not match the experience of the Champagne condominium. It's not the right drink. Champagne, you celebrate a tremendous occasion. It's not... I mean, the place wasn't bad. It's not horrible. I'm just saying it's not... If, if you're going to call it champagne, let's be specific. It's not the... You know, it's not Dom Perignon. You know, this is the, the kind of champagne you get at at Ralph's when you're on the way to uh, not Thanksgiving with your family, but Thanksgiving with someone else's family. And they've invited you because they felt sorry for you and you're going cause, and you want to bring something and you don't want to spend too much on champagne, but at the same time, you know, you don't want to seem too cheap. So you get that, you go, $20 feels right. It's, it, it should be called $20 champagne condominiums. That's, and then that, that, then you understand. That would be more, that would be better. That would be a better name. They should be, they should make that clear what kind of champagne it is. As far as I'm concerned. I've been recording now for 18 minutes and 19 seconds. And I think I'm good. I try to do 20 minutes. This one will be a little less than that. But I don't like to outstay my welcome. I'm feeling good about this. This was good. I'm feeling good about this. All right. We'll talk.